<clears throat> hello, hello, hello everyone. This is Ryan here and today I'm uh, bringing this video about um, the impending financial crisis and what will how will it affect cryptocurrencies and you know how you can better prepare for it now i think uh this video may be early for now especially with the the cryptocurrency bull market just starting and um you know it's it's always um it's always very uh, difficult to tell people that you know a financial crisis is coming because you sound like a party pooper now, if you've been watching my videos, you have you have subscribed to me before. I'm someone who is very positive about the markets, um, especially in cryptocurrencies. I'm full time, um, you know, providing uh, providing financial services in cryptocurrencies. Um, I earn in cryptocurrencies. I literally live on crypto cryptocurrency. So when I say this, I'm not someone who has a day job and I earn in fiat currency. I literally live by the sword. Now and uh you know watching when you watch this video just take everything with a pinch of salt i may be too early but let me substantiate why i feel that you should be better prepared for um the when there's a financial meltdown and what are the signs or at least how you can anticipate and prepare for it okay okay so firstly let's go to the good news first uh of course cryptocurrency markets are currently now at 67 billion um you know literally in the past uh you know i think one month or so uh let, let's let's look at it okay it's very exciting guys so let's look at it and uh you know when i when i started last year you know i, I never knew that all these things Oh, this market would pick up so quickly right so let's just look at three months ago okay so three months ago it was just barely at 19 billion 19.6 billion guys today it's already at 67 billion okay so that's a lot of money flowing in and during this time uh you know andreas antonopoulos actually came to singapore uh no i think probably in march i think probably in march or april he came to singapore and it was only a 20 billion market cap and at that time bitcoin was still the 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 main you know uh the main you know the main king the, the kahuna right and now look at the btc dominance today it's 47.8 so meaning that a large majority of the the money has flowed into altcoins okay so i think you guys have been making uh, a ton in ripple uh you know etc ethereum so on and so forth even myself okay life-changing income okay when i mean life-changing you know what i mean okay it's not just paying the bills but literally being able to retire some some i've heard being able to retire from from being if they call it ether retired or or whatever you know it's it's amazing or even bitcoin retired so you know i don't know whether there's anyone who's ripple retired but i'm sure they are so yeah let's just put it this way a lot of millionaires are going to be made in this um you know in this decade through cryptocurrencies either through cryptocurrency companies that eventually get listed on the stock exchanges or um you know investing in the cryptos themselves okay so uh yeah so let's go to the market roundup uh on who's are the who are the top 10 okay so currently now the top 10 uh you know in terms of cryptocurrencies you have of course number one bitcoin ripple number two you have uh, ethereum neem litecoin uh ethereum classic dash stellar lumens monero and uh bitcoin so these are the top 10 all right and uh yeah i mean all are doing very very well uh i think there are people who are starting to speculate uh outside of the top 10 top 20 because like i said it's always human nature to want to get um a whole coin rather than you know buying fractions of a coin because you want the whole thing and to be able to 10x the the whole bag is always just more exciting right so you know this is what i'm seeing okay uh now i'm gonna talk to you about uh where the money is coming from so the top four fiat uh to bitcoin trading markets over the past 24 hours and this is from uh, altcoin daily 
Okay, uh, this this usually I get notifications whenever I I use my Coinergy. It just pops up at the bottom right, and uh, you know it's it's very good. You know, so so if you guys are looking for a very good tool, um, the the referral link to is in the description uh, on the Coinergy tool, on the Coinergy trading tool. So I highly recommend it. Okay, so so first up, of course, we have Japanese yen. Korean won, US dollars and euro. Okay, so all the fiat currencies are opening up as of now. Um, and you know, the large part of course Asia, US, Euro, Japan, Japanese yen are all flowing into crypto. So that that's why you can really have this surge. Now it may seem scary at first when you see in three months you have um 40 over billion flowing into cryptocurrencies, but um this is just the beginning, okay. And uh, like I said, uh, of course, anything that moves up so quickly can, you know, form a bubble and burst. And, you know, everyone in the cryptocurrency markets, even myself included, are going to be affected. But knowing what to do is very important. So this is what this video is all about. So let me just explain a few things first. This is the volatility index. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a little bit of a history lesson, okay? Um, back in 1998, this is the, the Asian financial crisis. So you can read about it here, okay? So 97, 97 uh, Asian financial crisis, okay? You, you can go and take a look at it. I don't want to go too much into detail, but it happened basically. It started out in Thailand and uh, of course, naturally, uh, it was, uh, because of the Thai baht, right? And, uh, you know, the governments were forced to float the baht due to the lack of the foreign currency to support its currency to pack against the US dollars, okay? So, this was that, right? Now, then, back in 02, 02, 03 was the SARS outbreak. This is probably an, a little bit of like a, like a random event that happened very quickly after, slightly after the, the Asian financial crisis. So, this was a SARS outbreak. Everyone was uh, very worried. You know, it was like an apocalypse. People were dumping their properties, especially in Singapore uh, and Hong Kong. They were dumping their properties. So, if you had picked up property at this period of time, yeah, uh, you probably make, make some money. All right. So, this, okay. So, I hope people heard what I mentioned about the volatility index. It's the fear, fear gauge, right? Then, of course, we had, um, you know, every person in America, you know, if you were old enough at that time, I was 25 years old, I just stepped into banking and uh, this was um, subprime, right? Lehman Brothers, right? The the whole more, uh, subprime, uh, uh, you know, happened and I just came into banking just slightly after, uh, just, just during the 08 period, right? And stock markets were just falling and yeah, and then, of course, uh, you know, you still had the, the fear of banks still going belly up. And now we are, we are all, all in the calm again. Okay, nothing, nothing really exciting at the moment. No signs, uh, well, signs of war, but, you know, it's all just say, right, until it actually happens. So, what do we do? How do we prepare? Okay, guys, people in cryptocurrency, no one will actually know. Because cryptocurrency actually happened in the wake, you know, it, it it Bitcoin actually appeared in 08, right? So no one actually knows how Bitcoin will actually react because it was so small then. Only a handful of people knew about Bitcoin, and of course, naturally, after a financial meltdown, no one's gonna believe in the digital currency, right? In fact, everyone was holding gold. So what I'm just trying to say is that we are we are yet to test this 67 billion market okay we are yet to test as of now 20th of may we have yet to test how this market is going to react to a financial crisis how will your ripple stand stand against um, a, a complete meltdown of the the finance? how will ethereum how will bitcoin how will ethereum classic litecoin all fare against a, a financial meltdown now there are a few things that we can ask ourselves firstly is are any of these things on leverage okay from what i understand there are companies that are actually lending people money to get into bitcoins or into crypto in general 
I, I don't think it's very widespread because it's going to be a very small pockets. When the subprime happened or the, or the financial crisis actually happened in 2008, 2009, everybody was lending. Small banks were lending to um, people around their towns to flip property. Okay, It was happening on a massive scale. Now, for Bitcoin, it's, for crypto in general, it's very, very different Okay, because not banks are not really lending um, people uh, money to go and uh, enter Bitcoin. Okay, you could do it, of course, like, you know, and not declare what you're going to do with the money, of course, right? You can you can collateralize your home and then, you know, get an equity loan. And, you know, I think banks have been a little bit tighter on lending ever since the subprime because they would always be very conservative to lend about maybe 50 to 70% of the loan to value. Okay, no longer would they over leverage and give you like, you know, 90%, uh, 90%, 100% because, you know, the, the, they learned, I hope, right? But then again, you have, you know, the underlying asset. So the underlying asset is the key factor here. If the underlying asset just, you know, just suddenly there's a huge dump, people start losing huge amounts of money on a leveraged uh, product, then that's when you see the whole chain or a domino effect take place and everyone starts losing money and panicking and panic selling everything. So just like, okay, maybe a good example for people on Poloniex, right? Remember when Ripple was, was starting to sell down aggressively and the whole market, and you know, you're, you, you were getting liquidated from your existing margin positions? Think about that, but 1,000 times worse because the money in play we're talking about hedge funds, we're talking about the banks. It was pure mayhem, okay? And of course, stock markets, forex markets are heavily leveraged. Crypto, not yet. So it may not happen in crypto, but it could happen outside due to some other factors, right? It could be Trump declaring war, North Korea declaring war. Um, ISIS, whatever. It can be anything, guys. So how to prepare is the most important thing that I'm trying to get at right now. Okay, so firstly, what do you do in a financial crisis? Depending on how the news takes place, I would long go. Now, a few things that you can do by longing go. The, the, the conventional way is just to buy go. Okay, not paper go. If you can, I would highly recommend buying gold, like physical gold. And, you know, it's very shit to, to, to say this because I personally don't even like keeping an asset that does nothing because it does nothing and just only goes down when the, when stock markets are bullish, cryptocurrencies are bullish, and you go and recommend in a video uh, that you ask people to buy gold. Wow, Ryan, you're such a party pooper. You're really stupid. But let me tell you for a fact that when the markets are gonna gonna fuck up on you, it's gonna go belly up. Gold is gonna be your saving grace. Now, I'm not gonna tell you how much of a percentage of whatever you earn from crypto is supposed to go there. You decide that for yourself. For me, I'm just taking a 10% stance for now, at least for the next six months or so. Okay, and I'll assess the situation. How do I assess the situation? I'll, I'll just keep track of the volatility index, right? The moment that it starts to spike, you'll see gold prices start to pick up, okay? That's, that's just the way it is, all right? And then what you can do is that in the stock markets, right, if you have a, a, a margin account, uh, you know, you can short the banks. That's one thing as well. You can start shorting the banks and start making on... Uh, 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 the downside of, of certain stocks that have run up too much and are due for a correction. That's another way. Now, the cryptocurrency markets are a little bit tricky. I can't really advise on what's going to happen because I personally wouldn't know, right? Now, people are saying that the safest bet is to put everything in Bitcoin. That means you have to really reduce your positions in altcoins and that's what I'll do. Okay, that's what I will do. I will reduce my positions in altcoins and stick to Bitcoin. Will Bitcoin take a hit? Yes, it will because Bitcoin is still considered an asset. It's not really proven to be a safe haven, safe haven as of yet. Okay, so majority will be probably in 
um, I will I will increase my positions in gold as as um, the, the 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 whole situation unfolds. I will have my positions in Bitcoin, okay, and then from then I will start looking at shorting you know certain stocks, okay. That's what I'll do because whichever usually in a financial meltdown, you have uh you you can do both ways. You can look at anything that an industry that would thrive. Um, let's say war, right? Usually, um, any any weapons, uh, companies, you know, usually profit. Okay, weapons companies all are profiting. Um, defensive stocks like pharmaceuticals, healthcare usually pop up, so you can long those. Um, you can, um, I'm not sure whether US dollar is still considered a safe haven, but the safe haven is usually Japanese yen, so you can long Japanese yen, stuff like that. Okay. I won't want to go into detail what levels and all that, but like I said, these are the steps that you can take to prepare. And um, yeah, and if, of course, now we are still bullish, okay, but take profits from your trades and of course, naturally start putting them into assets that will do well when it does happen. Because why do I say this now? Let's look at the volatility index. This happened in, happened in 08. Okay, let's look at the dates. It happened in 08. We shall not ignore O2, okay, the SARS period, and then after that it happened in um, oh, uh, 2008, sorry, 2008 and 1998, okay. So this is 10 years, we are coming to the next 10 years, which is 2018. Now I'm not some kind of whatever, okay, doomsayer or whatever the shit, okay, I'm just looking at stuff very factually, very logically, and you know, the markets. Okay, the, 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 the whole, all, every single market is up. Okay, it, it doesn't seem to be coming down because of all the, um, the cheap money that's floating around. So guys, um, you know, do a, make a decision for yourself. Whether you want to prepare is up to you, but I'm just preparing and, you know, for my viewers, um, you know, this is something that you can do. Okay. And of course, naturally, if you, if you're looking at creating passive income through cryptocurrencies i have a list of programs in my description below have a look at uh bitcoin brains have a look at uh, eve trade have a look at uh, bit club these are the programs that i use to supplement my trading account and i actually have a video um that uh list uh that basically helps you to strategize using these programs to supplement your trading because trading is an active um, active kind of uh, active uh, uh, you know a active it's an it's, sheesh sorry about that it's active income where you have to sit and make a decision and put in those uh, uh, entry levels and take profit levels and, but at the end of the day you want something that while you're sleeping you can earn Bitcoin passively so those programs give you a chance to do so now I use Coinergy Coinergy is also excellent for people who want to uh, keep track of their cryptocurrencies and draw charts you know like all these indicators and all that excellent way of making money uh, i mean learning how to how to at least uh, re read your cryptocurrency entry points and consolidation points and at the same time also uh, it does have a referral program each uh, person that you refer who signs up on a package with coinergy you get 15 bucks so it's not too bad right make money here and there and then you know uh, save it up uh, you know, spend it, whatever you want to do, okay? So the whole idea here, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Please feel free to like, comment, dislike, but more importantly, if you if you feel that I've been value-adding to you, please hit the subscribe button and don't forget to click on the bell to receive a notification on the next video, okay? Thanks so much for watching, guys, and have an awesome weekend.